Uh, I want to take us back to a conversation I had this morning with Amir Adran. He is a, a professor of law and medicine at the University of Ottawa. He's been very critical of how the uh, federal government has handled the rollout of its data, and he's saying that it is urgent that uh, more information needs to get in the hands of Canadians right now. Here's our conversation. Good to see you. You've been critical of the government's response on this issue of data sharing and COVID-19 projections. Why is that? Because government is not providing good data to Canadians, accurate data, timely data. They're unable to do that because they have failed many warnings to build the systems to gather the data themselves. So government itself is operating largely in the dark not a good place to be in a deadly pandemic. And because of the frailty of the data, government is not in a position to show Canadians an epidemiological model, which is just a fancy way of saying a forecast, a prediction of where this pandemic will go. And that is something, of course, Canadians need to see. And it's something that specialists need to see to make sure that the government's choices are wise and not foolish. We all need to look into the crystal ball of a good epidemiological model. Now the prime that's what the permit is hiding. Right, and the prime minister this week has been saying that, uh, you know, he's been defending his government as being transparent and that uh, highlighting a range of information in his words uh, would not be as useful uh, as perhaps waiting for some clear data and some hard numbers. What's wrong with that view? Where did the prime minister get a science degree? I mean, seriously, when he says that he has an idea of what is useful data to provide during an epidemic, with all due respect to him, others who have a science background have a better idea about that than he does. And his answer is a political one. It is not anything but. It is an answer that is underneath it saying, we in the federal government have done a poor job of acquiring data from the provinces. We have done a poor job of analyzing it. We have done perhaps no job at all of actually modeling the future, of taking the data we can get and devising a crystal ball, a model that will tell us about the course and the future of the epidemic based on the choices we make as a government now. What he's saying is these things don't exist. And he's not, of course, going to admit that. What he'll say instead is that the information he's giving out is helpful to Canadians. That is not honest, with all due respect to the Prime Minister. So why do you think this is, this is happening then? Uh, I know there's often the, uh, I guess, view that Canadian governments, when you compare them to the United States or other countries, can be a little less forthcoming with releasing public information, whether it's uh, just part of our political culture or, or something else. Is that what's happening here? Or do you think there's uh, another factor to explain why there's this reluctance? 17 years ago, when we had SARS, one of the problems was that the provinces did not share information about SARS with the federal government. And that led, by the way, to Canada being one of only two countries in the world that faced uh, a criticism and a travel restriction from the World Health Organization. We were one of two countries that faced that sanction. And it was because the data sharing was not there between the provinces and the federal government. Well, 17 years ago, we promised this would be fixed. 17 years later, here we are, and it's not fixed. This is beyond dangerous, because if the federal government doesn't have accurate timely epidemiological data from the provinces, then the federal government is flying blind. And Trudeau's government is making decisions about how to fight this epidemic blind. When that's happening, our lives are at risk. The reason I'm, I'm insistent on getting better data and the government being transparent about not just the data, but the modeling that it performs with the data, is all Canadians need a better understanding of where this epidemic is going, especially scientists, because scientists can use those data and use that model, if it's ever made public, to analyze and give a second look at the government's choices. If the government is making choices that aren't the best, 
by having the data out there, scientists can critique it and maybe make decisions that the government agrees will save more lives. Our lack of transparency is very probably killing people. And that is why I feel the government cannot hide behind the excuse of saying, we know best about what data to release. And to be very frank, that's not the approach taken in other governments. Singapore has been wonderfully transparent about its data. Even Iran, and Iran is no model of transparency or good government, but even Iran has released its epidemiological data where Canada's government refuses. Trudeau's, it's almost shocking to say, he's less transparent than the Ayatollahs right now. And, and that should not be the case. Right, and in terms of uh, what data we are getting, we know that uh, we're getting some more provincial data, British Columbia last week, Ontario today, Saskatchewan has pledged uh, to release more information. If we begin to see more and more provinces uh, essentially take the lead on releasing their own models, their own data, uh, do you think that will put more of an onus on the federal government to release its data? What can we learn from what um, we're seeing from those different provincial governments across the country? Look, the onus is here and now, whether the provinces act or not. The federal government has a duty to act responsibly, regardless of what the provinces do. And, you know, we, we're in April. This epidemic was known and already on the federal government's radar in January. Where are the data? This really is a failure. And can I just tell you one story about why this matters? In, in the United Kingdom, the government was making decisions not to aggressively fight COVID-19 until scientists at Imperial College using government data ran a model and they found that those government choices would lead to about 500,000 British people dying, half a million people. That's what the model warned of. And days later, the government changed its plan. Why? Because the, the data were available to scientists. Scientists made use of it. They were able to critique what the government was doing. And in a happy ending, they, they forced the government to reevaluate plans in a way that will save hundreds of thousands of people from needless death. When our government holds on to the data, doesn't release its model, what they're really saying to Canadians is, trust us, we've got this right, and we're not even going to let our country's scientists take a further look to see if we could do it better. If that ends up killing some Canadians, oh well, at least we protected our data. All right, Amir Adaran from the University of Ottawa. We'll certainly be continuing to follow this story today and in the weeks to come. I want to thank you uh, for your thoughts today, and we'll certainly be speaking again soon. Thank you so much.